And uh, it was a great time, great experience, and we, we got in the Word a lot. And I remember sharing with him um, the hidden wisdom that Paul's talking about here. And he goes, Josh, you know, I just, I don't think we'll ever come, you know, no one will ever really know the truth. There's just so much out there, so many different theologies, you know, and he quoted this. He says, I hath not seen nor ear have heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And I said, well, God has to me. He goes, no, no. <laughs> and I brought him to this passage, and in verse, verse 10 he says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. And he was just dumbfounded. He didn't know what to say. And I said, if he's revealed them to us, you need to know them. You need to know this hidden wisdom, this mystery of, that he's, he's talking about. You need to know this because it's what you're to walk in. It's what you're to live by today. And, um, you know, he didn't. <laughs> Uh, he, you know, he still asks me questions, which is, which is hard because I want him to see these things because God has revealed them unto us. And if you, we'll continue through this passage because it's a beautiful passage. It says in verse 11, For what, what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. This, in this wisdom that we get, that, that God revealed to us, and as we see it as what God's revealing to us through His Spirit, this is the very thing that Paul's praying for, that we may know the things that are freely given unto us. And these three things that we're going to we're gonna see in Ephesians are the things that God has freely given to us and that we didn't know and we need to understand because in that is our, is our deep intimacy and our relationship with God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ today in the dispensation of grace. Turn back to Ephesians, Ephesians 1. So Paul is praying that we might have some spiritual understanding uh, that we may be enlightened in who God is and what he is doing today. Um, so he lists three things. The hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. <clears throat> that just made me think. We should turn, turn to uh, Ephesians 2, verse 6. Sorry, guys, jumping around a lot. These, these, things are, these things are important to know because um, if we don't know them, then there's going to be, there's going to be confusion. Verse, uh, chapter 2, ver um, let's go to verse 5. Paul says, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. That's God the Father quickening us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Verse 6, And hath raised us up together, but that wasn't it, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Paul nips in the butt people who think that we're going to be coming down on the earth. God didn't just give us the option whether we wanted to be in the heaven or earth. What, what does he say there? Made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That, that is our inheritance. That's our, that's our calling is the heavenly places. And that's where we'll forever be. We will, we will not be coming back on the earth, as, as uh, many say. Turn, go, uh, turn to Philippians 3.20. Philippians 3.20, for our conversation is in heaven. That word conversation has to do with citizenship. If you think about us, be, or us being a U.S. citizen, that this is where we reside. This is where we work. This is where we live. This is where um, we have fellowship. This is where we communicate. You know, we, we, we know each other's language. This is, our, this is our citizenship, and he says that it's in heaven. It's not on earth. Turn to Colossians 3. 1 through 4. Colossians 3, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things 
which are on the earth, which, which are above, which Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Amen. Christ is our life, and he's in the heavenly places, and that's where our conversation, that's where our citizenship is today. And, and through faith, we need to reckon that so and live in that position, and, and that will change our, our walking here on the earth. We need to focus on, focus on the heavenly places. So let's take a look at these three things um, that Paul talks about in Ephesians 1, the hope of his calling, and, and we're going to continue to jump through some verses. Um, I think uh, Paul talks about the hope of his calling, and, and like we, we just saw that you know, our calling is in the heavenly places, but I think there's something deeper here that Paul wants us to understand because he, he talks about God, um, God's inheritance in the saints in the next part, which we'll get to. I think there's something a little bit more that Paul wants us to to see um, here, what is the hope of his calling? Turn to, turn, just turn the page, maybe not, to Ephesians 4, verse 4. <clears throat> he says, Paul says, There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. In Ephesians, in his prayer, he says the hope of his calling, but in this passage, he says the hope of your calling. His calling and our calling are one and the same. And, and we're going to see that here. If you take, go to Titus 2.15. What, what is our hope? Think, our hope is the resurrection and, and the new body that goes along with that resurrection. Titus 2.15 I think I got the right, wrong verse. 13, sorry. <clears throat> Verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. When we see Christ, we'll not only see Him, we will no longer need faith because our faith will be, will be realized in Christ. We'll, we'll, he'll appear and we'll see Him face to face. But we'll also no longer need hope because we'll have Christ, but we'll have that new body. That hope is tied to our new body that, that uh, 2 Corinthians I think it's 5 talks about. Um, that we groan within ourselves now. The hope of we're looking for that new body. Um, continue with me to Colossians 1 5. Colossians 1 5. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth. Of the gospel again, there's a, there's a hope laid up laid up for us in heaven. Not only our inheritance in the heavenly places, but a new body. Turn uh, Colossians three uh, three four. We saw that um, he is our life. Turn First uh, Thessalonians one ten. I think I got these wrong. Sorry, Philippians three twenty. Philippians 3.20, again, for our conversation is, heaven, is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Our calling is the same as his calling. He has received his glorious body, and as, as we realize the hope of our calling, we will receive our glorious body as well. It will be fashioned unto like Christ, which is, you may not seem like it's a big deal, but we have brothers and sisters within the body who are striving and laboring to enter into the kingdom on the earth and, and, and thinking that they'll receive you know, whatever body that goes along with that. But we have a heavenly body that will be fashioned like unto our Savior, Jesus Christ. We have the same calling as he does. <clears throat> 